Hello, everyone. My name is Frank Anthony, and welcome back to Let Me Be Frank, episode 82. It's been a long time since I've recorded an intro part. It's so weird. And I was actually, I was kind of messing around a little bit, and I was pretending I was doing some sort of like ASMR on the microphone. Like I miss, I miss using this microphone so much. So I was doing certain things. I was like, hello guys, my name is Frank Anthony and welcome back to Let Me Be Frank um, for lunch. I think I'm going to have a grilled cheese sandwich. Uh, <laughs> if you like that stuff, let me know. I'll start a whole ASMR type of thing. Fun fact, I actually, I tried to do a, a ASMR a little bit. And um, I don't know, maybe I just didn't have enough commitment. If there's enough people that would actually tune in for something like that, um, yeah, I will help you go to sleep or um, do other things that I won't name right now. So before we get into today's guest, normally I do, you know, I do some updates, I do a quote, I do other stuff. I'm always changing shit, but uh, I don't have a quote this time. Sorry, but I can definitely do some life updates because, wow, yeah, two, 2021, which now it's 2022, which is crazy. Make sure you're writing that correctly on your bank statements or essays or whatever you're doing in your life because I always mess it up. Always the first, second try, I always mess it up. Did it on my doctor's paperwork the other day. However, with, um, yeah, 2021 really at least the second half of it kicked my ass honestly I hope you guys had a better 2021 than I did it's just yeah I mean the pandemic is not fun and I think I think a lot of us thought okay like now that 2020 is over it's gonna get slowly better which it it's it has but then we have our hiccups too right and that's what kind of makes us feel like it's gonna go on for the rest of our lives which I really hope it doesn't we just need to um we need to work harder do better type of stuff and um and then at the same time just we sometimes have to remind each other that we're there for each other because one of my weaknesses during last year was definitely that feeling of isolation and loneliness we're not able to see people like we were or at least i wasn't but you know i think that did affect a lot of people where we weren't able to maybe travel or go out as much i know some people are still doing that but some people are also being really careful. I I just, yeah, I since I don't, it's not required for me to travel. I'm just really trying not to leave the state as much as possible or like go to another country right now, even though I really want to do stuff like that. But yeah, I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, no, we got to just kind of be better and make sure we stop having these surges and all that. But anyway, back on track, life updates. Actually, ugh, I wanted to get off that topic, but I have to mention I did end up catching COVID at one point. It was um, a little bit before the holidays, which is the worst. So many people probably got it. I hope no one, I hope you yourself didn't get it like I did. I hope any of your loved ones didn't get it, but I did. You know, it was the first day or two, it was awful. The fever and fatigue were really bad. However, I never lost my sense of taste or smell, or I never lost any of my senses. So my, I don't know, my experience was weird because after those first two days, I was definitely getting better pretty much like six, seven days in, like I was pretty much back to myself again. And then I, because that was happening, I decided to take another test and it came up negative, which doesn't make sense because I, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to, I'm pretty sure once you test positive, that you remain positive, at least on a test, for up to 90 days. Like, you might not have it, but it still will come up on the test. And for mine not to do that, I just don't know. It's weird. I don't know if I... I'm like, did I just get the flu? Was it... Like, it's so confusing. And these tests did not help because I had a positive test and I had a negative test. And I don't know. And it all happened before and after Christmas Eve and Christmas, which just sucked because honestly the holidays aren't really the best time for me as it is so that made it even more depressing but there were a couple people that well there was a few but definitely a couple that were really there for me during that time and I apologize for um because I know I did it when I get sick I get I don't know if you guys are like this I feel like more men might be like this than women. I'm not trying to be stereotypical here. I just, I swear it happens. Like men can sometimes be a little bit more babyish when they get sick. That is me. I can admit that. 
And I, but what I do is, yeah, when I'm not sick, I'm like strong, independent. Sometimes I don't even want people near me. And then when I'm sick, I want everyone to give me soup. I want everyone to be there for me. I'm like crying. I'm sad. I'm lonely feeling. So I, I apologize to the couple people that were reaching out to me because I really appreciated them. But I know I also kind of probably clinged on to them a little bit. And that's not who I really am as a person, but it's just, I don't know. I, I don't know why I do it. I think part of it is just like the, like, don't leave me, like abandonment type of thing. Um, Because even like when my mom was trying to be there for me and stuff, it's like I didn't want her to go. You know, I was like, no, mom <laughs> and stuff because it's, yeah, I just, I don't know. I hate being alone during that type of experience. And with being sick, my absolute least favorite thing, it's not even the sickness itself. It's being left with all your thoughts. And I mean like all of your thoughts like I won't just think about daily things I'll think about things that happened years ago and I can't stand that I only usually that usually only happens when I get sick is when I start reevaluating my life and I start thinking about things that happened in the past because I physically can't move or anything so yeah being sick sucks and I got sick but I am better now and I really hope everyone out there that's listening is doing okay and that your loved ones are okay and if they're not or if you're not, I'm really sorry for that. And I really hope um, you or and or your loved ones can recover and get through this. So another update, I'm trying to think, I swear I had more than that, because a lot's been a lot's been going on. I guess the only other update I can really think of at this time that I want to reiterate is that this show will be ending there may be one more episode after this one, which will most likely be a solo episode where I just kind of go off on. <laughs> like, if you like these intro things and you like just listening to me talk, that whole episode's going to kind of be like that. So, yeah, definitely tune in for that. But, yeah, unfortunately, this show it used to be very consistent, and now it's not because so much is going on in my life. Like, I'm working other jobs and... Just I'm trying to still connect with people in my life. I realize that human connections are so important, but then at the same time, I met so many, I met so many amazing people through this show too. And I had so many great connections that way. So it's just, it's, it's challenging. You know, I don't want to stop. And that's why I'm really debating and there's going to be a really good chance that a new show is going to start. I don't want to say the name of it yet because I don't want anyone taking it just in case, (laughs) honestly. But let's just say it wouldn't be a solo show. It most likely I would be hosting with a couple other people and it's going to be something that's more, it's going to be more of a niche. Let's just say if you're someone that reads books or you like books, you would most likely definitely like this podcast that I'm potentially going to be coming out with most likely it's still in development but because I'm trying to finish up this show which I it's mm, (laughs) I get I really suck at saying goodbye Um, and I'm already tearing up as I think about that and I hope and I say I hope I don't on the next episode but I will (laughs) it'll probably be even sadder Because I just, I really, yeah, I'm not good at saying goodbye to things. And this show started May of 2020. And now it's, yeah, it's going to be going May of this year would have been two years. And I just, yeah, no matter what I've done in my life, whether I've worked certain jobs or just, yeah, or met certain people and, you know, you kind of have to split your ways and stuff. I'm just, I'm not the best yeah, I, I used to I used to say, oh, it's change. I don't like change. But no, I don't like goodbye. I don't like saying goodbye, especially when I'm not the one that wants to say it. Um, with You know, with me ending the show, yeah, it's my decision at the end of the day. But it still sucks. But also, sometimes we have to say goodbye. And every I always believe that everything happens for a reason. So I really want to um, – I really want to thank you guys for – tuning into the show whether you watched the episodes because there were video episodes some of them or for listening to the show there's actually people that are messaging me now as the show's closing out saying they really like the show and i'm like well damn that sucks (laughs) i wish i wish you found it sooner (laughs) i need to i need to be a better advertiser i guess (laughs) so it just yeah i know people really enjoyed the show and i really enjoyed making the show and 
my favorite part of the show. Oh, I could have saved this for next episode. No, because I'm going to forget. I'm just going to say it and then go right to the guest. My favorite part of the show, besides everyone checking it out, was connecting with other people. Because I did solo episodes, and those were cool too. But just the amazing people that I have met, and most of them I'm still friends with today, it's just really cool. Whether they're in the podcasting industry, or they were an author, or they were a chef, or just you know all these people around the world, it really taught me that we all can think different things, and we all can act differently, but at the end of the day, we're all human beings. And I was able to really just connect with so many different people. And I just, to me, it's that's one of the best gifts in this world is to be able to have that privilege of meeting these people, these amazing individuals. All right. So without further ado, we're going to get to today's guest, which is personal freedom coach and my new friend, Anthony Catalino. Oh, he's awesome. So we're going to, towards the end of the episode, he's going to talk, he's going to mention his Instagram and TikTok. Definitely go check those out. His TikTok, he makes a ton of little videos that have some awesome advice in there. So please go check those out. He's going to say it in the episode where to find that. But yes, yeah, so Anthony is a personal freedom coach. Listening back to this episode as I was editing, I realized I forgot how much we talked about his personal life and certain things that I learned that I never knew. It really just kind of goes to show how you can be you can really be down. You could be down on your luck or mentally you could be so destroyed or crushed yet still rise from the ashes like a phoenix. I just I'm so inspired and so impressed by Anthony's strength, not even just as a a personal freedom coach, but just as a human being. He's just such a lovely person, and I can't wait for you guys to get to know him more, and he's going to talk about his stuff. And just, yeah, all the things that he had to say were just, yeah, were just awesome and amazing. And I'm honestly grateful that I can even call him a friend so or that I even know him (laughs) so without further ado I'm gonna let him talk more (laughs) and interview him and yeah I hope you guys enjoy hey Anthony how's it going (laughs) it's quite fantastic today in the neighborhood how are you today I'm good I like I like how you put that I didn't even have any I wish now I kind of wish I had something clever like that to say I'm just like I'm good (laughs) (laughs) you learn that good good is good is good like good is nice Good but I try, I, I try to switch it up. Yeah. I, 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 I want to, even if I'm not feeling my best, I, I learned years ago, and maybe this is diving too deep into this, this, this session already too, too quick, but I learned years ago, even if I felt bad or I didn't feel like my best and I would show up to my job, which was like hospitality, and someone would be like, someone would be like how are you? Deep down inside, I would be like hungover, wasn't feeling my best, but I would say fantastic. And it, and it's you can either look at it like I was lying or I was literally kind of already beginning to rewire how I felt and and I really feel like that has helped me, you know, f- feel even better in life. Anyway, let's 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 that, let's get started. No, I was say, yeah, that's awesome. No, it's funny that you said that because I had told a friend one time I was trying to switch up adjectives, so it wasn't saying good all the time, and I had said fantastic, and you could tell. They thought like I was being held hostage. Like, is everything okay? <laughs> it's not. It's not normal to be fantastic in today's yeah. society. <laughs> I mean, I even had a, there was a regular that came in, and and one day he's like, you know, every time I come in here, you're always fantastic. And I thought he was gonna kind of give me lip or just you know like it's uh, enough is enough. I'm over it. And he's like, it's actually been quite contagious, and I really appreciate it. It's it's actually helped lift me up. So thank you. And I was like, what? Seriously? And I thought he was going to come at me with, like, anger or disappointment or, you know, like, stop it already. And it was the opposite. It actually – and he was kind of a dickhead, you know, dick face. So (laughs) it was actually refreshing to hear from him. Yeah. So. No, I've noticed. It's it's easier to kind of be negative over, like – it's almost – yeah, it's weird. You know, it shouldn't take that much effort to be kind, but yet Mm -hmm. it seems like it's the harder of the two for some reason. Sure, of course. There's the, there's an easy way out, and there's a more challenging way. I've kind of grown to love the more challenging way, or the, the the kind of the pain of growth rather than the pain of hanging out and doing nothing with myself. So, I like that. 
So let me ask you the first question, something that we ask here a lot on this show. If you were a novel, what would the back of your book say? Choose yourself. As soon as I thought about that, I, like, I, cause I, I gave it some thought earlier, and as soon as the, the question came about, I was, that's the first thing that came to mind. And I was like, is that the right question? I mean, is that the right answer? <laughs> it changed the question. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I went for a little walk, and I, the more I thought about it, I was like, yes, that is the right answer. Um, I feel like ever since I started choosing myself, putting myself first, you know, we don't learn that in society. So as soon as I started doing that, I feel like my life started, began to shift. Change started to happen, more fulfillment. Uh, um, I saw more of the light than the dark because I used to live in a lot of dark. Yeah, that whole idea of like you come first, like I come first. Just like an airplane, you know, unless you put that, you know, the oxygen uh, pressure drops, unless you put that oxygen mask on you first, you can't really help anybody else. But we don't learn that in society. So um, that's, that's my, I think one of my biggest messages I would like to share with people is choose yourself. That is so true. Yeah. And see, and with all the positive energy that you do put out there online and just in the world in general, I think, yeah, people might not really think about the dark stuff that you've gone through in life, or maybe they forget about it from first glance. Mm -hmm. So you are a, <laughs> if people couldn't tell already, you're a personal freedom coach. <laughs> can you, t can you tell us more about that and what type of service or services that you offer? Absolutely. I've always had a knack with people. I always, I always like people were gravitating would would be gravitating towards me even since I like was like a teenager. So, but that's not what I wanted to do then. It's, you know, it's, it's just like most people. We we go through so many different phases of our life of dreams and desires and uh, what we want to achieve in our life. And through it all, I, I came up with the idea that like coaching, like this this great idea of like helping people feel better. So I got my life coaching certificate back in 2015. And uh, that, 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 that idea of a life coach never really resonated with me so much. I feel like it wanted to be something different. And there's, there's another coach out there called Preston Smiles, and he goes by Personal Freedom Coach. And I really like the ring of that. It's like, what better of a job or um, to help people become personally free? Free from the walls they build up, the, the, um, the shame, the guilt, the pain. I, I, I generally work with the gay community. So as a gay man myself, we, we tend to build up walls. We tend to hide who we are. We tend to be ashamed of um, who we are. Uh, and so I like to help p p free people of that. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is great. You know, it, I think it depends on the individual, but I, uh, I love the one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationship with people. Um, so I have clients that way. And I also have a group coaching, which I invested, because um, I have a coach myself. I have a business coach and a life coach. I invested m my effort and my energy into a group coaching about a year and a half ago when, when the pandemic first came. And it's been life changing. I'm in this group of, uh, I think, over a couple hundred men now that are, you know, they come and they go. And but we all learn together. We're all empowered on a weekly basis, pretty much on a daily basis to transform our lives. And so from there, I've decided to do one myself, uh, but more for the gay community, more for uh, young gay adults that desire a, an upgrade on their inner world and just uh, have that desire, that dream to become leadership roles, really want to make a big difference in the world. And uh, that's, that to me is, they're both great. It, again, it all depends on the client. Some people like that one-on-one, -on -one, some people really wanna be in that group, that group space. Um, but we have to be reminded that we're not alone, so the group space is, is quite fantastic. Um, I really love it. It's like we, we chime in on a daily basis, we have weekly powwow calls. Uh, we're there really to support each other um, while we're navigating through this thing we call life. No, well said. The group that you're in is that on social media or is that like something you guys go meet somewhere or that's uh that's all based through um slack channel so that's oh, okay. how we all communicate uh but we i just they discovered me i discovered them through social media it's called wake up wealthy um it's designed for for men in business um okay. but the cool thing is is they're they really break it down to four, what they call four pillars mind body spirit and then business so a lot of guys get into this group, invest their time and their effort and their money into this group, thinking they want to crush it business, but really so much more unfolds as uh, so much more, excuse me, unfolds as they spend time within this group, because it's if you don't really line up the, the, the first three, take care of your body, take care of your mindset, constantly, you know, like choose to learn and take care of your spirit. Uh, the, the more we do that, then we succeed at anything in life. We excel at anything in life. Um, so a lot of people will teach you how to like build a business. Great. You go to school to like build a business. They fail to, to fill you in with the, the first three. 
Um, and that's how it's, it's been life changing. I feel like in the past year and a half, my, my life has completely changed uh, in the best possible way. No, that's good. No, and I'm happy for you. Thanks. I'm happy you were able to discover that platform. And then you're also yeah trying to help other people as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's great. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. So one of your main messages is about living life fearlessly and authentically. So could you tell us more about that message and maybe some advice you have for others when it comes to following that message? Okay. Uh, and these are all fantastic questions, by the way. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> one of my favorite things is to think, and I used to be afraid of saying the right thing. I used to be afraid of living, you know, speaking my truth. And I continue to learn on a daily basis that like fear is not real. We, we create it all in our mind. You know, fear was this kind of like idea of when, you know, I, I think uh, to my understanding when the human body was created, it was this whole idea that if there was a line around the corner, you would know your intuition, your gut feeling would tell you there's like danger. And so what do people do now? I feel like most people, most of us, including myself, we, we live in fear. We're like always being feared and it's not real. It's an illusion. I like to think of it as standing for like false evidence appearing real. And so uh, one of the things in this group that I was in, now I, now I challenge my clients as well to do this, is take a fearless inventory. What, what are we afraid of? Like write it all down. And that can be really scary because when we look inward, when we look at uh, who we are and you know the things that have happened to us in our past, it's not about necessarily revisiting our past, but it's about looking at like what are we afraid of? And then we can, once we can direct light to each one of those things, then we can begin to heal, we can begin to grow, we can begin to learn from it rather than have it scare us. It can actually be a tool to um, set us more free. And the more we do that, we become our authentic self. It's like, the, what was it, Gandhi, I believe, said? Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure it was Gandhi. Like, the whole purpose of life is to give it meaning, and the meaning of life is to give it away. Like, okay. I feel like I can serve my clients better. I can show up more powerfully to my relationships, uh, more authentically, more uh, kind. You know, we open this talking about kindness and kindness is hard, but we, but if we choose ourselves and we, we choose, decide today to treat ourselves more kindly, mentally, physically, emotionally, then everything kind of seems to fall into place. Uh, we feel better on a daily basis. Everything that we're, you know, is in our life seems uh, a heck of a lot better. So reduce the fear, become authentic, become our true self, our innate self. We, we were born this, into this world, our true self and, you know, from conditioning and, living in this world, you know, hearing what society says and what our parents say or whoever raises us, we start putting ourselves into a box and we don't belong in that box. So my encouragement to you or my, my, my suggestion to you would be to make that list, take that list or create a list of a fearless inventory, go inward. Again, I know it can be a little scary, intimidating, like overwhelming. You, you might, your anxiety might go up a little bit, but keep trying. And the more you do that, the more you're able to ask questions to other people like myself that, that you know, have gone through it and, and can help you learn quicker, can help you learn faster. Because when, when you do ask questions, when you do reach out for help, uh, I feel like my life has, like I said, changed drastically the more I asked for help. Um, and it gets easier. It does. It, it, it may seem scary, but it, it definitely does get easier the more you participate in growth and learning and reading and becoming a new person kind of thing. No, nice. I, yeah, my anxiety is always going up. So it's like, might as well explore it. <laughs> Don't wait. <laughs> sure. And like, literally, like when the more you explore it, you'll find like, maybe things won't seem as heavy. Do you ever do that? Do you ever like write things down? And, and when you can look at it from a, a different view and see like, like really, what was I afraid of? Because we're, we all do that. Like it's, it's inevitable. It's just part of, it's part of living. So yeah, no, I, I do like once in a while. Cause sometimes, you know, it's almost like out of sight, out of mind. And I think we're just, you know, as human beings, sometimes we're guilty of that. We're like, no, if we just stay busy and don't think about it, it'll just go away. And it doesn't, <laughs> it eventually catches up to you, but yeah, yeah but that's no, I, and screams, <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> then it screams. It's it really yeah. loud. <laughs> But I actually, yeah, no, I did have, um, there was something actually today, which when this comes out, it won't be today, but (laughs) there um, was some sort of realization. I don't have to get super into it, but just Mm -hmm. something that had happened so many years ago that I cried for the first time today about it. And it was like over 10 years ago, but I guess like it was just something that partially anxiety, partially something else that I just, I thought I had expressed enough at the time. And I guess I didn't. Cause you know, 
I'm one of those people that's guilty of repressing things, but yeah, it, it was just, yeah, it was so weird, but because I was, I was working on something specific that was able to connect back to that. So then that, it was almost like a hidden treasure chest box thing. And it like opened up, I accidentally opened up and it was like, ah, oh, and I'm like, wow, ah, as the tears come down. <laughs> you know, what was the, like, what was the, ins not the inspiration necessarily, but you know, because that's what happens when we show up, when we choose ourselves, when we take the step forward into the unknown, the, the, what seems scary, that's when like more opportunity comes through, but we got to take that step forward. So any idea what that step forward was for you that caused that? that I, I was working on my book and, cool. it, and this one, normally I work on fiction, but I really have been wanting to work on a memoir type of thing. So I think that having to delve into certain specific events unlocked that hidden one. Cool. I think it's also important to remember that, you know, a lot of people, especially when we're in like a darker space in our life, it, I used to feel like this where like I'm the only one. And it literally yeah. wasn't until I, I, I gained enough courage to go to AA because I was drinking too much alcohol because everyone has a, you know, critique or I used to work in an Irish bar and everyone would shame, you know, it's like people are looking to get help and you would shame it. I finally went and to hear other people's stories that they've gone through and you realize you're not alone. Like everyone suppresses stuff. Most of the world has too much anxiety. You know, it's, 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 there's a common theme in a lot of this. And I think the more we choose ourself, uh, then, then that's when things start to shift. So I'm grateful that you're choosing yourself more. Well, thank you. I, before the interview completely reverses <laughs> to where you're asking me all the questions, <laughs> I almost forgot to ask. I just thought of this as we were talking, when did you start your coaching business and because obviously, you know, there was like a before coaching, after coaching, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, I've always, like I said, I've always had a lot of, I've always had this within me where even, uh, I spent most of my time in hospitality. So okay. even at restaurants, people could, people would come to me, you know, they could, they found it easy to, to speak about some of their dark, darkness or their challenges. And I don't know how, but I could just say the right things or be the great listener that helped them feel better. You know, just enough, like, provide them enough, maybe with some wisdom that I've experienced because I wasn't afraid. Um, so I feel like that's kind of been within me for a long time. But I got my coaching certificate back in 2015 after I decided not to open a restaurant in New York City. I was, I raised like two thirds of the money. I was ready to do it, scouting for locations. And I thought, what is the, what is the reasoning behind this? What is the purpose of me, you know, opening this restaurant? Now, a little backstory. My father had a, a, an award-winning pizzeria for many, many years up in New Hampshire. It's now, he's now retired. He's closed. He was the only pizza maker. And so he decided to, you know, close up shop. And I thought, like, you know, continue that in some sort of way. I mean, I loved his legacy. product. Yeah, like a le yeah, his legacy. And then I thought, I, I'm not the pizza guy. That was my dad. I love his product, but there's something, there's another, a deeper reason to why I want to do this. And it literally, the more I thought about it, and again, this, this, goes in, this goes in line with choosing ourselves. We, we think about why we're doing something. And it was that interaction. I love, I, I've grown up in the, in the business and I love taking care of people. And I love when someone would walk in the door and it's just like, hey, 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 how are you today? Like, you know, and just get them to feel great for that hot minute while they're getting a slice of pizza and then they go off on their day. And if I could be that person, that's what I, that's what I desire to be was that person that would just inspire them just enough that, Quite, could quite possibly change their life. Because you, you, like, we, we really don't even think about how much a smile can change someone's moment, their day, their, 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 their literally their whole life. So I was like, I don't want to confine myself to a 750 square foot space for $13,000 in good old the West Village of Manhattan. I, and then I, I got inspired to, to you know, build a business online so I could travel the world because we, we are literally the creators of our own world. We literally can choose to create whatever we wish. And so I thankfully chose to not keep myself in a small hot box, you know, 16 hour day, six days a week, and instead help enlighten people in a different way. Um, so I got my certificate, but like we spoke about before, fear, I was scared. I like would coach people, I'd coach people, I'd coach people, would never charge anybody. You know, it was all about the practice and getting the rhythm in and the, the reps. And it wasn't really until COVID where I, I gained so much courage. I was like, this is it. The restaurant I worked at closed. I didn't have any more excuses. And I feel like I've transformed in so many different ways because I chose to. Now it was hard. It was it was very difficult. But that's because I was unearthing, you know, letting out all the stuff that I was suppressing for so many years. The shame, the guilt, the need to be validated. 
I couldn't cry for many years. I was a crybaby as a kid. I couldn't cry for so many years. It drove me, drove me nuts. And I've had so many great cries in the last year, and it's been so freeing. Yeah, that's that's kind of really where it started, how it kind of unfolded. And and now I'm just, I, I love the space I'm in and, and the, the amount of people I'm helping. It's been pretty, quite fantastic. Were you more nervous starting the coaching than you were opening up a restaurant? Uh, it came it with like- its own, it came with its own nerves. Okay. You know, owning a restaurant, I had to like raise hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. That was really tough to me. Um, I'm not a financial person. You know, we don't really learn that in school. So that, that part was really hard. I got excited about the, you know, building a business plan. I got excited, but you also get frustrated because you, you want it to be done. You want it to be open. And there's so much more to, to anything in life, to building anything in life than just the idea and then opening. And then the challenges of like that you deal with once you have bills and rent. And so this was a home-based business. So that was a lot easier on my mind, but still okay. came with its own challenges. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. It's we're it's like that instant gratification we're so used to now. <laughs> even on which we'll get to TikTok in a little bit, but even that when it's like something doesn't go viral, we're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. But I put 5 seconds of time into it. What? I don't get a reward? And it really? yeah, it doesn't always work that way. Yeah, but nothing works that way. Uh, you know, even even someone that like was an overnight sensation or a band, no, they had been working their butts off for years. You know, maybe there's some people that just were born and they could all of a sudden play Beethoven. You know, but the, the, the odds are few, far in between. You got to work at stuff. You got to put your mind, your effort. Uh, something I've learned in the last year is we really need to align our intentions with our actions. I mean, for so long, I would get like really actionable for like, I don't know, 30 days, 60 days, and then lose interest for, you know, six months. So if I'm losing interest and I'm speaking to the universe, the universe how can the universe give me back what I'm not putting out? So consistency is key. Showing up to our, you know, doing our best every day is, is really matters. And being intentional with what we want to, what we wish to create, you know, the lives we wish to change, so forth. I first, so when I, I first discovered you through Facebook Live videos, I can't even remember how we became friends on Facebook, but it just happened. <laughs> and I just started seeing all these live videos one day or like day after day after day. Cause I think you were, I don't, it seemed like you were doing them every day unless I was just like trying to catch up with repeats. I don't, I don't know, but you were really four at the time or th- three or four. Oh, in the same day or a week. No, in the week. Okay. I was like, holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, I mean, that's a lot. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Making videos. But yeah, I saw you there first. So you were making the Facebook live videos. Now you have a TikTok account as well, which you can plug that in later. And that blew up like crazy. I don't think you've had it. How long have you had it now? It's been a couple months now. And it's got to be honest, it's, it's plateaued, but more to learn, more to gain. More to grow. But I mean, it it's still, it definitely, like, in the sh- that short, of mir- p- short period of time, that definitely blew up a lot. Um, what made you want to start filming live videos in general? And how has the new support on TikTok felt for you? What made me want to start creating, uh, writing, uh, making videos? Um, I grew up in the acting world. I was a child actor on stage. Uh, I've always kind of had this bubbly personality and once I, once I wanted to get more of like how I felt, mind you, I was like this like fun kid and then I discovered who I was as far as being gay and then I went through this super dark space in my life, lots of heavy drug usage and once I started waking up from there and, and not living that life anymore, I couldn't help but like want to help people. I couldn't help but like, hey, if I can make the change, the drastic change from like, like truly feeling grateful that I'm alive to, I really like my life. Now I love it. Like if I can do that, like anyone can do it. It's, it's, it's just a matter of dedication. Um, so the videos was a way to get my messages more out there, but just like anything else, they started in my old dark apartment with very terrible, you know, footage or like, you know, the, the, the uh, whatever I used, I think it was like an old Mac laptop just in like, I didn't know enough about lighting. So it was, they were short. You know, I had my growth in that just like anything else and always wanting it to be bright and perfect. It's, it took a long time. But so it was that spark of like just re- really wanting to get my message out there and how to help other people and, you know, paying attention to our beliefs and our, you know, being in the more present moment and just certain topics that I think I thought would help people. And then I realized the only way I'm going to get better at doing it was by doing it, stepping into that unknown. And even to this day, there's enough days where I just might not feel like it. And I still press the live button. You know how it is. You're interviewing somebody like, oh, we've scheduled this time. Unless you're like severely hurt, like it's showtime. (laughs) 
even if you don't feel like it, like, and you just got to trust that it's going to be okay. And then I got good at like, like riffing on a topic for like 20 minutes. And I'm thinking, yet I'd still have the thoughts in my mind of like, I'm not good enough. You know, I, I'm not going to know what to say next time, but I did it pretty consecutively for a while. Moving forward, now, now, now I don't spend so much time on Facebook now that TikTok has really taken off because TikTok is a great platform that really helps support people in becoming a creator and getting their message out. Where Facebook, you got to, you know, you got to invest your money in kind of ads and that kind of thing. They don't really spread who, you know, what you're doing out. If, if you got something going good on TikTok, they continue to build that and get, reach out to more people. Facebook almost like limits you. So I've been using Facebook a lot less. But then it was my brother that was like, you got the personality for TikTok. And I thought, I'm not, I don't want another avenue of social media platform that I don't want to deal with. And he's like, just try it. So I thought, what the heck? Gave it a go, made a few videos from like my old stuff. Didn't love doing that, but I thought, I'll try something different. Something I used to do, this daily inspiration. I tried that and see. And then all of a sudden, between the daily inspiration and a few other, you know, like kind of like funny ideas that my brother gave me, it like blew up. Like 10,000, over 10,000 in like a week. And the best thing, the best thing about that is here, you know, I want to, I really want to revive humanity as a whole. Like I'm really working heavily with the gay community now because it definitely needs a lot of light and needs a lot of love. And I'm a gay man myself, so it's, it's fitting. But I want to revive humanity as a whole. And here I was trying to coach people more my age because I just turned 40. But because I take good care of myself now, I feel like I'm 25. And it's opened this whole new world up to younger gay teens, younger gay adults that are loving what I'm putting out there. They're there and it's and it's changing their life. So many coming out stories and people that, you know, just they, they didn't think that they would ever amount to much. I mean, they still have a lot to live. They're they're young, but I'm it's like a whole new world opened up for me and my heart's been radiating with happiness and joy. Just me to, to be able to reach so many people in such a short period of time. And, and yeah, I'm like, it's like, I'm naturally high on life every day. It's, it's, it's kind of bananas. But now that like, like I said, it's kind of, it, it is still growing, but it's, it's plateaued a little bit from the, from how fast it was growing. But now I look at the situation and I see, okay, this is what I got now. This is who I have to work with, continue to show up and add value to their lives to the best of my ability, get creative, come up with new ideas, and then I'll be able to grow and I'll be able to continue to grow. But if we don't continue to go beyond the status quo or whatever, you know, whatever you thought was, you know, possible, then we'll just continue to stay at that plateau. We'll never grow. But if we continue to put that foot out into the unknown, something else we're afraid of, dig a little bit deeper and just move forward, we'll be able to reach more people and serve our purpose and, and so forth. So the, the, the exchange from one platform that really helped get me started Facebook to this, I think it really helped, you know, set me up for this, this new space to really get my message out there and how I want to help. No, I like that. And I, it was, yeah, it was definitely cool to see the, to see the transition too. Cause it's very different with like Facebook. You could go for like long periods of time and then TikTok. at first it's almost like it limits you with the time, but then at the same time, it's like, no, it actually is kind of a good thing. It's kind of a good device, which you can go live as well, I guess mm. on there and kind of go for a while. But yeah, no, the bit, everyone's yeah. The bit size type of content people are really going for lately um what you said about the younger individuals who are gay and that you've been able to help you said something about that like they're so young and i or that they're so young so and they oh, what did you say now it's like slipping me <laughs> it was something about them being young but not realizing certain things i guess and well, that, they, that they have like so much more to live or they have yeah. like they're just beginning i mean they're just the beginning yes and i think i can remember back to being that age and thinking very similar like the same way mm -hmm. and that when we are younger a lot of us we don't really think about all that possibility that we have out there and all the time that we have and then as we get older we're like oh wow like <laughs> that was a lot like we have more time behind us than we do in front of us now <laughs> yeah and so many people look up to me and they're like, you're, you're so wise and you're living this life. And I'm like, I just turned 40. <laughs> you're, you're showing up to what I'm, what I'm preaching and what I'm speaking of at like 19 or 22. And, that, and that's commendable. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I never would have paid attention to that stuff then. Never. <laughs> My dad was an optimist in, in, I, when I worked in his pizzeria. And he would always talk about this happy go-go stuff and have all these, you know, the four agreements and the, all these, like, positive, influential self-help books on his, on his bookshelf in his pizzeria. And I was like, enough. I don't want to hear it. 
Yeah. I think I think the gay starter pack, you have to loathe life. <laughs> I think that's one of the requirements when you <laughs> when you're younger for some reason. It's like to be I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's the human loathe. Like it's you you there's always gonna be good and bad. You gotta, you know, really feel bad to to realize you don't wanna be there anymore. Mm-hmm. That's why that rock bottom, like there's there's so much lesson to learn within, you know, falling down and having it really hurt. So we can't we can't shame that. There's success in that. There's there's so much beauty woven into it and hardship, and that's only that's only if you if you see it as a way to grow, it's only going to help you in the long run. But we're not taught this stuff, so it seems like oh, it's why me? Like I'm the only one. I could be the only. I'm I'm the only one dealing with this anxiety when like 40 million people in the in the world or the country deal with you know high anxiety. We're not alone. Definitely. We're all made of the same stuff. We we all have some sort of mental health disorder. <laughs> yeah, because we, no one teaches us how to take care of it. Instead, we get shamed for seeking help or going to a therapist or, you know, ask even asking. Because that's the whole thing behind, like, toxic masculinity. You know, like, be a man. Don't cry about it. You don't need help. That is the wrong message to send to anybody. But we're in a, you know, a constant evolution. Like, I, I feel like there's a lot of change. Just ever since COVID, I feel like a lot of people went through a, a huge consciousness shift into um, uh, more into themselves. They maybe had more time to focus on themselves that really hurt, but they, they gained a lot for me personally. And I think for a lot of people, a lot of conversations I've had, it's an evolution. Um, I think we're headed in a great direction. I think, I think we have to remember that, that you know, there's been pain and suffering for years and we do not have to choose to live like that. It's, it's all a choice, I think, my belief. Oh. <laughs> my opinion <laughs> and we all have uh, our own opinion so it's you know yes we do and that that's what this show is all about too but i wanted to just touch on your tiktok comments are wild <laughs> that section do you have any like favorite ones off the top of your head i mean people go wild there i mean i, I love the ones where it's like i needed to hear this today like all the, those are the obvious like that just hits home um there's some filthy ones you know, it's, we live in a world where, like, I could either take those personally or get upset about it, and I'm just going to, you know, let them be. Um, someone tried to preach heavy religion on me last night, and I was like, oh, boy. I'm not into religion. You know, I always try to kill people. Like, what's something we always said in the restaurant business was kill kill the customers with kindness. Not kill literally, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, where's that going in a second? <laughs> but kill them with kindness. You know, this yeah. when you work in hospitality, you deal with lots of different emotions, attitudes, personalities. And I got really good at allowing people to be themselves, but you know, they, I wouldn't allow them to treat me unkindly. So a lot of, you know, thankfully, I think because I put a lot of good energy or great energy, this like good vibe out there, I get very little hateful or hurtful ones. So even when someone's trying to like lay heavy religion on me and believing in Jesus and the blood of Christ and all this kind of thing, I'm like, hey, that's, 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 that's your belief. That's not my belief. You're more than welcome to stay here, but if you continue to talk about God and this kind of stuff, it's, it's, it's not welcome. Maybe God's fine. But, you know, everyone has their own belief of their divine spirit. I believe more in the universe. Some people believe in, you know, Jesus Christ the Savior. Some people believe in, you know, Gandhi, whomever, Buddha, whoever. But other than that, I'm not sure where you were getting at this with, with other question, other comments that I get. <laughs> because some of them are filthy. Some of them are, you know, there's a the variety, but I'm grateful that most of them are healthy. Or most of them are, I needed to hear this. Thank you so much. Yeah. You've changed my life. And that just like the fact that I'm reaching more people and they're speaking back because they don't have to show up to that stuff. They don't have to listen to it. They don't have to pay attention to it. And they're choosing to. And so that means that some one little liner that I say is is transforming some some wonderful human's life. And that's how peace is spread. It's not fighting for more peace. It's it's spreading peace and you get more peace. It's always interesting, too, when people will post negative things on something. It's like you do realize the algorithm is just going to push it even more out there, right? <laughs> it's like the more attention you give it, it's not. It's definitely not going to go away now. <laughs> yeah, but it's also it's, it's, it's inevitable. Like I, I follow some amazing people, Gary V, Prince EA. They are spreading, not, spreading nothing but positive messages for so many millions and millions of people. And they get hated on all the time. And I think it's really important just the way you respond to something. I've learned a huge lesson over the last year because I grew up with a mother that was super reactive. She's a wonderful woman, but she's very reactive. And so I gained a lot of that attribute. You're Italian, right? Sicilian. Oh, yeah. Sicil- yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get they it. They don't talk about their feelings. They just speak about them loudly. <laughs> 
And so I, I became very, I became very reactive in my life. The less I smoked marijuana, marijuana really helped calm me down. And so as soon as I kind of was giving that up, I became super reactive and, um, that's not the right, right way to be. A good, a good show that I just started watching too. Uh, have you ever participated in watching um, Ted Lasso? No. Great show on Apple TV+. Plus. He's incredible on how he responds to people because people could treat him like crap. He like, teaches football in, like, in England and the whole stadium's calling him a wanker, which is not a good thing to be called. And he just tunes it out. Doesn't affect him. You know, he, he just takes on what he's supposed to be doing and uh, it's a, I don't know, it's really inspiring. So. No, yeah, I'll have to look into that more. I may, I made a TikTok a little while back, or at least one specifically was on not spreading online hate. And on TikTok, I got hundred. I mean, I got over two hundred negative comments on it of just people. It was like, it was like in in a way, I almost gave permission for them to send online hate and cyberbully me. Yeah. <laughs> It was we gotta, we, we gotta look at it like what we're putting out there is what we're gonna get back. If we're like throwing out those those like keywords of hate and you know don't do this and people are gonna come back and they're gonna want to you know give it to you. So, <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, no, no world you know. peace anytime soon. <laughs> no, no, no. You are great on TikTok. You spend a lot. You spread a lot of peace, um, a lot of wisdom, and that's great. So, but anyway, what was I gonna? Yeah. So another reoccurring message that you've had. I want to say, yeah, that you've promoted on TikTok was about embracing who you are and you announce your name and that you d- identify that you're gay. So how long did it take for you to fully start embracing yourself and how has that message been received online? Has it been positive, negative, a mix of both? I know we were kind of, we were slightly touching on that a little bit. Mm-hmm. It took me a long time to embrace who I was. I didn't have the tools. I didn't, I didn't know I had the support that I currently do that I'm providing to other people. Um, so it took me personally a long time to embrace who I was. You know, I came out at 16 and I felt like it was pretty easy for me. I never really got bullied. But I hid that that truth from my parents for a long time, even though I knew they would love me. Because my, my older brother's gay. I have two brothers and one of them's gay. So they knew about him, but I was still terrified for whatever reason. We make up, you know, plenty of scenarios of how it could, could go wrong or not be right. And when I opened up to them, they were fine. But that, those six years of lying really, really did something bad to me. So it took me a while to be my authentic self. It took me a while to really appreciate me being gay. It took me a while to not hide who I was anymore. Um, I lived in New York City for 15 years, and I felt comfortable living in New York City, you know, rather than like a small town where everyone's homophobic. But I, I found myself in front of customers at, at the restaurants I worked at and was still afraid to say that I had a boyfriend or a husband because we were, I was so conditioned, as, as in most gay men are, they're so conditioned to hide from who they are, their true authentic self. But I truly believe that that's what life's all about, is that unfolding, is, is discovering that, and, and then stepping into it, and then embracing it. So it took me a while to get there. Something It was something my brother came up with. I've been saying my name for a while, but specifically on TikTok, it was something my brother said, you know, encourage the younger generation to say your name, and then I am gay, and say it, like, proudly. And you know, I think even one of my talks, I was like, one of my TikToks, I was like, my name's Anthony, I am gay, and I'm proud to be gay. And that got great response. Huge. Is this your brother that is also gay? Yeah. He's been is he single? <laughs> he is single. <laughs> <I'm just messing. laughs> he's single and he's and he's lovely. Uh but he, he was giving me some encouragement, some ideas, and he put that out there and, and it was empowering. And I couldn't wait to do it again. And then I would do like duet this with me and get other people to say it. I think there was some confusion because other people would be like, my name's Anthony, and I'm gay. I'm like, no, no, you're supposed to say your name. <laughs> they were trolling, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that felt really empowering, and, I, and, I, and I'm a huge advocate for saying things out loud that I wish to believe. So say I am ridden with anxiety. I used to be. I feel like it's, it's diminished a lot. That's good. You know, say whatever the opposite is. Like, I have courage. I have faith. I believe in myself. I am confident you know, I'm, I am more present and I, and I'm a huge firm, firm believer though. If we think those things, that's one thing. If we say those things, that's another thing. If we write them down, that's another thing. But how about we write them down so we, they remind us and then we say them and we say them out loud in the shower. I go to the dog park down the street. I don't care if anyone else is there. If they hear me, poof, I literally, it's like a mantra. Like I say, like I say it every day. I am wealthy. I am loved. I am powerful. I am happy. Even if I didn't really feel that, it's like I was putting that energy out there. So 
Yeah, I love I love how it's had a I think a really good impact on people's lives. But I would always start my name. I would always start by saying my name first. I think it maybe was something I learned in the restaurant business where, you know, good afternoon. My name's Anthony. I'll be taking care of you, kind of thing. But there's also it reminds people of who I am. I think and that that resonates with people. They hear the name somewhere else. Oh, Anthony Catalino. At least to my knowledge. So it helped like step me into my power into that space. I think it also maybe gave me comfort. It's like once I said it, hey, Anthony Catalino here, another fine addition or whatever. And, and that helped, you know, get me into the groove of putting myself into this state of being in that space. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. If <laughs> turning so on if a you, switch. Huh? It's like turning on a light switch. It's like, yes, that helps, you know, get that light on. If you're, I was going to say, if you're in Anthony's area and go to the dog park and listen to Anthony just say, I'm gay, <laughs> he'll be yelling it. <laughs> or just come on TikTok and you can hear me say it plenty. <laughs> or that, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I think there's a couple different versions. So <laughs> I did a few and the first one still continues to do the best, but it, the other ones have kind of teetered off, but it's, it's still, it's, it still blows my mind that I'm able to reach so many people and it's, I feel like I'm just skimming the surface, you know? Yeah, definitely. No, and, and that's going to continue to grow. Don't worry about plateauing. I meant to say that earlier, too. Mine's been plateauing for four months. So. <laughs> but then, you, but you're trying new things, I see, and that's great. So, you know, My, that's what we constantly do. Yeah, I mean, the brand, and that's the problem, is coming up with your brand or your message, I guess. And I don't know, my brand, I'm like, I always fall back to my brand's just me. I guess. And I'm like, well, what is me? And we could probably have a whole conversation about, yeah, discovering oneself. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And doing that. But yeah. So what is one of the most important lessons that you've learned in life? One of the most important lessons that I have learned in life, and I'm not going to get too like crazy linear with like modern day science, but there's a lot of great information out there with modern day science. The fact that we're all made of the same stuff, but we're all like vibration. We're all made of energy and we're all made of, we're all like vibrating. Coming from a, someone with a heavy drug usage and, and smoking marijuana pretty consistently, consecutively for like 20 years. Like I, I didn't want to smoke marijuana anymore. I knew that like it brought out, like I, I abused it. Marijuana is a beautiful thing. I smoked way too much of it and I abused it. And so it, it, I was always like seeking this like, this like the same feeling that it used to bring to me, but I wasn't, I was not going to get the same result because it didn't, it didn't impact me the way it used to. And I realized when I was, when I'd smoke, I would feel different. Of course, well, obviously it makes you feel, it makes you every, everything more intensified, but I start to have certain thoughts and I start to have cer certain feelings and I realized I was giving off a, a certain type of vibration that I did not want to put out into the universe, if that makes sense. That does, yeah. And so it's really helped me not smoke it. It's really helped me drink less alcohol. I love alcohol. I've, I was, like I said, hospitality. I used to work in a high-end restaurant in Manhattan where we taste different booze every single night. Wine, alcohol, like liquor, not in abundance. But I would literally, I've, like, I've, I've had it in my life for a while, so it's, it's become a habit. I used to drink, I used to work in an Irish bar. It's like I, I've had my share, fair share. But so now I, I, I realize I want to show up to my power. I want to show up for my clients powerfully. I want to show up to this podcast recording, and thank you again for having me. I want to show up well and, and, and deliver a great message and impact people's lives. And I want that vibration to be at a higher vibrating level that is more impactful and more conducive is that if that's the right word so i'd say the fact that 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 would be the biggest lesson i've learned aside from choosing myself aside from not taking life so seriously learning to laugh through it more um we're all gonna die we're we're all temporary it's 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 kind of almost like a truth to say that but it's true <laughs> we're all temporary you know it's when we don't know when so like might as well do our best to learn how to rock it rock the living daylights out of it while we're here well, now, now I feel honored that you're here because <laughs> we're, we're both using our time to be here, the remainder of our time. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. So sorry to just kind of like back step or backpedal a second. Do you, so did you stop smoking or you just smoke a lot less now? I just smoke a lot less. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I do my best because it's, I feel like it's still haven't let it go. I've been like hypnotized. I've tried to stop a million times. I've like worked, I've realized what works and what doesn't. Uh, and so I have my guidelines and my, my things, you know, for the longest time, if I ever had it in my house, I would, I would just smoke it. Like I'd wake up and just smoke it. Not, and not, not do anything, but my day would be completely different. I'd go to the, I'd go to the park and admire nature and be like, oh, I love my life, but I wouldn't fo focus on my business. So while it enhanced one thing, it lacked something else. So I haven't even, I still drink alcohol, but I just, I do my best to 
drink less of it, be the designated driver more, you know, put myself in positions where uh, I don't have the opportunity to do it and, and really focus on what really matters. And that, that doesn't, that doesn't get me where I want to go. So all the other heavy drugs that I used to abuse too much, those are done. Those have been done for a while. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I haven't known you like super long. Like we've, we've talked, but yeah, I mean, obviously I didn't know any of that stuff. So, I mean, wow. Yeah. I'm sorry. You, I, I'm sorry. That was part of your journey. It, it's weird. It's like you say, sorry, but then it's like, it's also, you've been able to really overcome a lot as well. So it's like, it's hard. It's like, I, part of me wants to say sorry for that experience. And <laughs> no, part sorry. of me is like, but you grew from it too. And obviously you wouldn't want to get rid of that, the growth. Yeah. I think it's important to not discount any single thing, choice, decision that you've made in your life. Any of it. No. I don't regret a day, even the, the, the terrible choices that I made. It's, it's all part of life. It's all part of, you know, growth. It's all part of you becoming uh, better. There, like I said, there's lessons to learn in that rock bottom. There's lessons to learn in that loneliness. There's lessons to learn with your anxiety through the roof. You just got to see it as a gift, as a tool that we can, we can grow from, we can learn from, we can evolve from. Everyone's got trauma. Everyone's got different levels of trauma. But every, and everyone handles you know, traumatic things differently. It's inevitable. We were thrown into this world and we're supposed to navigate it. You could have had the best parents in the world that loved you so much. I, I truly believe every parent does their best best with the tools and the resources that they knew to, they, they knew to use. We got so many tools and resources on our inside. It's time we f pay attention to that, learn about that. But no, I don't regret it, thankfully. And thank you for, for saying that because it's true. Like, like you could be sorry for me. I don't, I don't want people to be sorry for me. My, if I talk to my mom about it, she's just like, she just starts getting super emotional. She didn't, she didn't, she was going through a tough time in her life and she didn't do anything about it. But especially with like the, with drug usage, you can't do anything about it. Actually, I, I take that back. The only thing you can do if you're dealing with a, a, someone in your life or your family that's, that's doing drugs, all you can do is love and support them. Positively spread, pray, say prayers for them. And, and uh, you, if the, the worst thing you can do is tell them that they're wasting their life, tell them that they're doing something wrong because they're just going to do it worse. They're going to do it more. You know, when we're, when we're told like, these are all the bad things you're doing, it just makes you want to feel bad about yourself and then you end up doing it more. So it's different about having an awareness about it. Yeah, love and support. Love is really the secret ingredient. It's really like the, it heals, you know, that kind of thing. No, I agree. What are, so to kind of wrap things up, what are your social media links or websites that you'd like us to follow you on or that you just want to share in general? Sure. Um, as I said before, Facebook, I kind of teetered off Facebook. I feel like I, I've had my time. We've had a great relationship. I'm grateful for it. I've made great connections with someone like yourself. Um, I get reminded when there's birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love um, that. And I love to wish people, you know, happy the, one more time around the sun. Uh, but I mostly spend uh, mo the majority of my time on Instagram and TikTok. And both of those handles are Anthony underscore S, which stands for Salvatore, my middle name, underscore Catalino. Again, Anthony underscore S underscore Catalino. Not the island off the coast of California or the dressing with an A. Uh, it's masculine. It's got an O. <laughs> Catalino. And if you're particularly, I mean, hey, I'm there to revive humanity. But if you're if you're a gay man... Um, you, you, you desire inspiration. You want to upgrade your inner world. Come hang out. See me on my lives. Um, listen, open, openly and, uh, learn, grow. Let's have a conversation. You're, you're interested in investing more of your time and your hard earned cash into you becoming a better version of yourself. Reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. It all begins with a conversation. Um, I love talking to people. I love helping people. And, um, I also, thankfully now I get to choose who I want to work with. I'm not going to work with somebody that doesn't want to invest in their time. You might want to give me your money and not, not do the work because the work's hard. I want to support, I want to be, I want to be supported and support people that, that want to change their life, that want to make an influence, might want to make a difference for the greater good, particularly in our community because our community needs a lot of love. There's a lot of judging. There's a lot of shaming and that's because hurt people hurt people. And, uh, yeah. So I'd say TikTok and Instagram are the best. No, and I like that when you said Frank Anthony's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like when you said the yeah her people her people. <laughs> it sounds it sounds repetitive, but it's yeah it's so true. Do you have specific times for lives? You just kind of go on. Um, for the moment, that's something that, like new to me. I I, I haven't I've I, I've played with Instagram lives. Um, I wasn't really getting much traction, so I don't really show up there. Um, TikToks. 
I now do Mondays between 7 and 8 okay. Eastern Time and Thursdays between 9 and 10 Eastern Time. Of course, as soon as I sign myself up, I'm going to Chicago on Thursday morning for a wedding this weekend. So I will not be there Thursday nor Monday. <laughs> but by the time this comes out, it should, it should be. You'll be good. <laughs> Every, I would say people will be married. We'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thursdays, Thursdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Mondays at, uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. All Check right. Time. So thank you so much, Anthony. Hey, Pass Frank here, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to stay updated on new episodes, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, and if you'd like to become a producer or make a one-time donation to the show, click on the Buy Me Coffee link in the description. I want to give a special thanks to my producers Monica Lee, Alexa Hunt, Jennifer Herrera, Stephanie Lindsay, Cass Nolan, Elena Rasmussen, and Kresha. I also want to thank each and every one of you for listening to the show. Have a super special awesome day, and bye. Mm -hmm.